So this is my Trailblazer, 2005 Chevy Trailblazer. Been working on it for a long time. This is my expedition vehicle. And I am currently working on adding an APRS Digipeter iGate and tracker to it. I'll show my radio set up in here. Got a quad bander right there. Old CB I don't use anymore, but I was too lazy to take out. And we got the GMRS down there. All right, still working on the APRS Digipeter iGate tracker system that's going in the Trailblazer. We've got our 12 volt to the 5 volt 3 amp power supply for Raspberry Pi 3 that's in here. We've also got our URI with the Motorola connector on it, GPS receiver that's going to take the SMA cable from the GPS antenna. Just about all that's ready to go. Still got to get the CM200 in there. I'm going to do her upside down and point a fan at it to cool it off. I'll show all that later. This uh, UPS hat right here, you can actually push a button on that and turn it on powered by that little LiPo battery that's on there. So what that's going to do is all this is going to be switched on a relay uh, to keyed power. So when you turn the key on, it turns this whole thing on. Um, turn the key off, it turns kills power to the whole thing. The radio will shut off. The Pi will be powered by the UPS hat as soon as you turn the key off. It, it won't actually turn off. It won't just kill power to it. It's got a script on it that detects whenever that power is lost. And if it's not restored in 60 seconds, it'll do an actual clean shutdown and power off the whole system on that Pi. And that'll keep us from corrupting the SD card just by turning off the key and killing power to it every time. I guess while I'm in here, I'll go ahead and show this little uh, setup that I did a long time ago. So, back here in this panel, we've actually got two, uh, what are they, Wuxon, Ocean, Wotion, whatever you want to call them. we got two of those bad boys in there. One is the GMRS model, and the other one's the Quad Bander. And we got wires going all over the place. But what this is, that is a CO2 laser cut plywood bracket that goes inside this fender well. And mounted to it, we've got little Noctua fans. And those actually have, I don't know if I can get it or not, but I'll try. It's a mess back there. Focus, maybe. Uh, Hard to see. Maybe I can point to it with a screwdriver. Right here, this little bundle of wires, that actually goes into the built-in fan connection uh, for the fan that's built into the radio. So those fans come on with the thermostatically controlled switch that's built into the radio that automatically cools it off when it gets too hot or when it's transmitting or whatever. So there's a fan for each radio and this big plastic thing is a 3D printed fan duct. And what that lets me do is put one, oh, that looks really ugly right now. Stand by. Come here. There it is. Fan grill. Fan grill goes right there. So both those fans, whoo, stuff falling over. Both those fans that are in there can suck air from the cab and blow it onto those radios so they don't get too hot in there. They're both remote mount, obviously. They've got uh, Cat5 extensions that go up there. There's one of them sitting right there on top of the old CB. Um, and the other one is mounted up there. You can't see it from this angle, but we got cut to length coax that goes up here to the GMRS and the dual band antenna. And pretty soon we're gonna have more up there. We're gonna have a GPS and another VHF for what we're doing right now. Oh, one other thing about these. 
So you'll notice right here, we've got two RJ45 pass-throughs, bulkhead pass-throughs. Those are actually the programming ports for those two radios. So I got more Cat5 extensions that plug into this. That way you don't have to take the whole panel off to reprogram the radio. It's pretty handy. You can also, I don't know where it went, you can take an RJ45 between these two ports. You can connect those two together and put them in repeater mode. So I have a short jumper that if I plug between these, I can turn those two radios into a mobile repeater. Also pretty handy. So I'm mounting the CM200 in here right now, and I forgot to mention this. This is actually an older Max Track mounting bracket. I got a million of them laying around, but I don't have any of the smaller ones for the newer radios. So look close. I made these little 3D printed spacers. I need to upload these to Thingiverse or something so other people can use them. But one side locks into the side of the radius radio and the other one hits the little detents on the uh, on the bracket. I forget what Motorola's fancy term for that is. That bracket has a special name. I don't remember what it is, but yeah. Uh, that's how you properly fit a smaller radio into a bigger bracket. Okay, now we got our CM200 mounted. I'm just about ready to go. Thing is, that little guy is going to get hot whenever we put the cover on. Cover goes on just like that. I'm going to do the same thing I did here. Well, almost the same thing. We've got a Raspberry Pi in here already. So, we've got this bad boy from Noctua. That is going to cover that nicely. Look at that, it's just about dead center in the middle of that little trim piece too. That's going to look good. This is actually the 5 volt model. Look right there. NFF12 5 volt comes with a USB header. Or a USB power adapter, I mean. So we're just going to power it straight from the Raspberry Pi. Which should be fine because it only draws uh, less than a watt, 0.15 amps. Yeah, that will be 100% fine to blow some air over that guy right there. We made it farther. Now we've got our fan mounted on here. And it should middle up nicely with that. So we'll just be able to plug it in. down just like that and have a nice cool breeze blowing over the radio. Sweet. So now we just got to install antennas, run some coax, and figure out the power situation. Oh, by the way, everything, if I can get back here, everything's going to be powered from a single Motorola connection. At a I mean, it's just a Motorola connection and then splits off to the 5 volt USB for the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi powers the fan, the URI, and the GPS. And also, subsequently, the GPS antenna. I forgot since it is an active antenna system. So, just gotta build some relays and do some wiring. We've got all this hooked up, we've done our wiring. We've got our keyed power relay uh, control Motorola cable. So, let's plug it in and see if any smoke comes out. I'll figure out how to prop my phone up. Ugh. Let's just do it like this. And... Please don't blow up. Oh, 
Raspberry Pi is blinking. Radio is on. And the fan is running. Nice. Looks like it's working. Uh, you can't see it. Maybe if I zoom in. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Light on the URI's on. GPS is on. Pulse per second not blinking because the antenna is not hooked up to it yet. Doesn't have any signal. Perfect. That's what we want. The UPS is doing something. Not sure what it's doing. But it appears everything is in fact working. In a second, URI should start blinking. Which means that Dire Wolf is running and is accessing the sound card. I'll make sure that happens like it's supposed to. There we go. Blinky lights. It's a good sign. Good sign, good sign. Oh, also we have the speaker in the front of this unplugged so that way we don't have to deal with actually hearing things because we don't care about that all right cool beans so now if we unplug it unplug the power to this anyways kill power to it when we do that the radio will die instantly um raspberry pi however should run for another 60 seconds and then do a clean shutdown so let's pop that off yep Power completely disconnected, but the Pi is still kicking. So is the fan and the GPS and the URI and everything that's powered off of that. Doing exactly what it's supposed to do. After 60 seconds of no power, it'll do a clean shutdown. All right, I guess it's time to run all the coax, mount the antennas, and get all this stuff cleaned up. Getting closer, we've got our new VHF antenna mounted, which is the one closest to the outside. We still haven't tuned that one yet, or checked the tuning on it anyways. But it is mounted, coax is ran. We'll come over here, there's GPS antenna. It is right next to those metal gas cans. Um, I might move it later. Those gas cans aren't always there, so. It may or may not be a problem, but we'll try that one out. All that runs down, actually passes through this weather seal, which is kind of kind of a crappy way to do it, but I've been doing it that way and just cramming it full of uh, sealant seems to work pretty good. So we did that again, and here's everything else. Getting ready to put it all up there. We gotta connect all the cables and everything and, and get that panel slap back on there and just about done and now we're all done and put back together all my poor little trim panels with all the paint coming off of them so here we got our two radios are back there and we got our new one in here pop that off there you go all the connections have been made, so now it's testing time. Theoretically, turn the key on and everything works like it's supposed to. I guess we're going to see if that actually happens or not. I'm going to try to prop my phone up where we can see lights blinking, maybe. I guess we'll find out. May work, may not. Here goes nothing, hopefully no smoke comes out. Well, I see lights. And I don't see smoke. Light on on GPS, everything appears to be powering up, radio is on, 
Now if this antenna for this GPS works good, that pulse per second light will start blinking as soon as it gets a lock. After you leave it turned off for a while, it takes somewhere around 30 to 60 seconds for it to get a lock. So I guess we'll see. I might even see it transmit whenever it starts up. So I guess I'll hold it right here, that red LED. Oh, we got GPS. Okay. It's got a lock. That red LED on that interface by that USB cable will turn red whenever the radio is transmitting. So I guess we'll see if that works. Wait on Direwolf to start up. There it goes. And I'm not real sure what the beacon interval is at. So I don't know how long it's going to take to transmit. There it goes. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? All right, now let's go to APRS.fi and see if we're on the map. Well, I just went through about an hour's worth of troubleshooting because I got a handheld sitting here listening to the frequency this thing's supposed to transmit on. Just, you know, to check it. And I wasn't getting anything but static through the handheld, so I had assumed that I broke one of these wires or there was too much RF or something in here. <laughs> I spent like an hour troubleshooting it, and I realized that the handheld was set to receive AM and not FM. So, that was a stupid mistake and a whole bunch of time wasted. Um, I just have it on a dummy load right now just because I was messing with some stuff, but it's booting back up right now. So let's see if we can hear packets coming through now. It should sound good, hopefully. Assuming none of this crap is broken and we actually did it right, and then when we mount it up back in there, hopefully that radio is not putting too much RF into that URI and screwing up the audio, but we'll see. It's not giving us a status blink just yet. Still waiting on that. Come on. Okay, we got a status blink. Should transmit here in a second. There we go. Much better. Now let's go look at the map and see if we're on there. We're finally done. Everything's put back together. We've got our fan running in there. You can actually feel the air coming out of the gaps. That's the nice thing about that being airtight or not being airtight. I didn't really have to worry about putting exhaust vents. There we go. Everything all nicely packaged up. And it is running.